God bless you today, Monday, January 25, 2016. I pray that you are having a blessed, anointed, appointed day. The Lord gave me a dream this weekend, unbelievable, wonderful word that I have to encourage you. And I want to open up in prayer. Thank you, Father God, for this day. We lift up our oil before your eyes, Lord. We ask that you bless the oil in our lamps, that you keep our eyes on you, that you anoint us, appoint us, and send us, that you cover us with your precious blood, Lord Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we say the boundaries around our life that the enemy has no place over that the enemy is defeated we cast out the enemy in the name of jesus we remind the enemy these are the boundary lines you shall not cross them in the name of jesus we claim our loved ones naming them now in the name of jesus and we thank you father god that no weapon no weapon anywhere anyhow at all shall be greater than you, Father God, in our lives. We thank you that you keep your angels watch and charge over us as well in the name of Jesus. Thank you for all the green lights in our lives. Thank you for your blessings. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for you healing our bodies, our minds, our souls, and our spirits in the name of Jesus. Okay. I want to welcome many more new subscribers on uh, the different outlets we want to thank that have joined. I want to personally welcome Freedom. You are number one one day ago. It says Lisa, Jack, Barry, Demetria. What a beautiful, beautiful picture. Such a very... Uh, soulful person i want to say you really you're like a seer kind of person you can really judge if a person is is a snake or they're a dove <laughs> and um so i thank god for you thank god for my uh michael for ed for emg for rick for hasten his coming for uh, all the different ones. It's just such a blessing to have you as part of our family. And I uh, want to thank also Antoinette and Robert from Florida for your uh, donation and uh, the other cash donations that have come into the ministry. Thank you so very much. It's all used to God's glory. And uh, we thank the Lord for that. I want to also thank... Um, Patrice that sent in a beautiful belated Christmas gift. I thank you so much. I love it and I have it on. <laughs> and um, the other uh, items that Patrice has put in the hands of the ministry that uh, I'm very humbled for and thankful for. And uh, we are seeking the Lord's wisdom on that as well as a book on masking the devil. I love this. And the da, Vin the, the da Vinci Code, that I love. I am just beginning. You know, it's so funny. You just gave me this, and I had a dream. <laughs> so it's sort of wild. And like you guys, I don't know <clears throat> if you have these uh, books that I sent out to those that are giving uh, financially into the ministry. I sent out little books that we're all supposed to be writing our journals, you know, whatever little notes the Holy Spirit gives you, or your dreams. As you can see, I'm already writing in my book. And uh, so I thank God for Him speaking to us and giving us dreams. Um, also want to remind you that you may not know that I send out a calendar, just a little one-pager, but it is a reminder of God's love. For us, So this is January's calendar, and it's a picture of Sweetheart and my granddaughter. That is a dear, precious little one that we love dearly. And Sweetheart, too. <clears throat> God uses animals. He'll use anything. <laughs> he will use whatsoever. 
So we thank you in Jesus' name. Okay, I want to share, uh, a call came in from Bermuda today, and um, I also had some unexpected things that I had to take part in this morning. That's why I'm getting this video out a little bit uh, late, more than normal. And um, main thing that's happening right now, not going into a lot of personal things, but <clears throat> the main thing that is happening is the spirit of seduction, the spirit of Jezebel, the spirit that would come and steal and destroy and kill is coming. Demons are literally manifesting in the backyards of people. I'm hearing all kinds of things. We don't want to give glory. We don't want to give place to these. We want to call them out, name them and call them and rebuke them and move on with our life and not give them place to continue and dwell on it or think about it because this is what the devil just loves to do. He wants to just waste your day away. So we have to know that we have the blood of Jesus in us. I literally saw this with my eyes wide open one time. I was in the bathtub and the Lord, I was just looking at my hands and I thought how ridiculous that people think they can tell you what's going on with your life. <clears throat> and you know, they cannot. God Almighty is the only one that knows what's going on with your life, my life. And uh, he is in control of our life as we submit our life to him. And uh, so anyway, I saw right through my hands to the water below. And I saw the blue water and then I saw my whole hand turn gold and it was glowing and then it faded to a brick color red and it was going back and forth to each color. And I said, Lord, what are you showing me? What are you showing me? It startled me. It, God will startle you because you're never planning on really seeing something. And so I said right away, Father, I know that I'm in that little window, that little space with you. What are you showing me? He said, I'm showing you me in you. And he said, if my people, my people, you see, God calls us his people. What an awesome thought that right there just will stop you in your tracks. He says, if my people could only literally see with their eyes, my blood that is in their veins. Oh, that's powerful. Thank you, Jesus. Then whatsoever they ask me for, believing, they would have 100% faith and have whatsoever they ask. Because you see, when you're walking with the Lord, His desires become your desires. So you're never really out of the will of God because you've submitted your life to Christ. And so you're thankful that God shows you and God leads you and he is in you and no weapon formed against you will ever prosper. Okay, this dream that I want to share basically uh, and then get into just a little bit of 1 Corinthians chapter 3 is where I'm going to be reading a little bit from. The dream was very amazing after um, Beatrice, Beatrice sent me this book, these books. And the Lord had been speaking to me a little bit here and there about different things. And he sent me this very unusual dream. And in this dream, I saw this, there was a crowd of people and there was a young woman, you might say, and she was, uh, I'm not going to say it was totally a woman. It was sort of like, you know how angels, sometimes they appear as feminine, but they're really angels. And I truly believe now that this is what that was. And there was a child on the back of this motorcycle, motorcycle. She was driving this big motorbike and this child was on the back about five years old or seven, something like that. And she came through the crowd <clears throat> then there was this huge skyscraper and she went straight up in a right angle, straight up. Now, you know, this is impossible to drive a motorcycle straight up. She went straight up and it was a skyscraper. Remember that, you know how many stories those are. She went all the way to the top. 
And then she went on the top of the building. Then the next scene was that she was coming out of the main doors down below of the foyer and there was a crowd of people and everyone came around her and cheered, cheered, cheered. Oh, that was awesome because it was, it was awesome. It was like supernatural. It was impossible actually in the natural, but she did it. And so she came out of this door of the foyer and she, everyone came around and they were putting her up on their shoulders, you know, like they do with the football teams. We see that where they'll put them up on the shoulders and they'll carry them around. And that's what they literally did with her. They lifted her up along with his child and carried her out and everyone was cheering. Now this is very symbolic of a lot of things, but in general, I'm going to generalize because there are many situations that the Lord told me of different ones that will be watching right now and they're going to need a word for their life. So what I'm going to say about your life as you allow this to apply, however it applies to you, is that we are in our entering a season right now, such as people even seeing demons every day. I mean, they're physically seeing them. And one person said, what, what do I do? And I said, well, get, welcome to the world. This is the, the world is changing every single day. And right now we are entering that new season where demons are literally going to be appearing. I mean, this person said it's, it's like Harry Potter, you know, all those, those evil things in Harry Potter just materializing. I said, yeah, that's, you know, uh, he says, well, what do I do? And I said, just what you've always done, just stand your ground, kick them out and don't think about them all day. Don't dwell on them because they're nothing in the name of Jesus. They are under our feet as the Lord has the earth, his footstool. So are these not even worth giving them the time of day. So anyway, what the Lord was showing me in this dream that his body is right now entering is the season of impossibilities becoming possible and doable and you'll be doing them such as it was impossible to go up the side of a building impossible how many stories i mean it must have been 90 stories it was huge yet the person went all the way to the top and went on top of the building and then came out of the front doors down below and everybody cheered. Okay, you can put this together. This is the season, the timing, when even though all the odds will be against you, whatsoever you're doing, all the odds, all of human known physics, all the gravity, the known gravity that people would say, well, it only works this way. It only works that way. Look, the ball's always going to bounce down to the ground. You know, in God's world, it will be whatsoever God calls it to be because God takes something out of, God takes nothing and makes something out of it. Only God can do that. Take nothing. You see, that's where we are. We are in that hour when invisibilities are be going to be impossibilities, excuse me, well, invisibilities becoming visible, impossibilities becoming possible, and you're going to be doing it. And then you see the people, cr the crowd cheering is the world, whether they be in Christ or not in Christ, will acknowledge these things. They will have to acknowledge them because it's going to be things that are impossible in the natural. But you see, this girl, when she went up the side of this skyscraper, wasn't operating in the world of the natural. She was operating as the world of the supernatural. As we've heard these stories where people have said, I've been in a car and our, our car, this other car was coming in an intersection and it seemed like we collided. But we didn't touch each other because we just went right through each other. We've all seen and heard those stories. So we are entering a new year 
And we are entering a year like we have never seen before. That means you're going to be experiencing in the flesh. You see, I don't just see that this is supernatural because I see that the supernatural sort of set up the natural for manifesting as it was. It was in the supernatural last year, maybe a couple of years. Now you've been praying for a certain thing or whatsoever. God's been speaking to you something that I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. But you know what? Unto everything, there is a season, a day, a time, an exact hour, an exact moment that God says, I'm opening the door now and I'm going to blow you in by my spirit if I have to. <clears throat> Those of that are in Christ will be pushed through this door. You say, what kind of a door are you talking about, Susan? I'm talking about finances. If you need a job, the dear sister called me this morning. And she says, I just need a job. We have this wonderful thing that God is doing with us, but I need a job. So God is going to give her whatsoever she needs to make her bills, to make her monthly, whatever it is. And also those that are seeking the Lord for their personal lives, decisions, whether it be marriages that are falling apart, marriages that are coming together, relationships, or people are coming back to God, whatsoever. You see, we're also in that pivotal time when all of your prayers that you have prayed over asking God for direction for your own life or whatsoever, you're going to see the answers manifesting because it's time that you come not only go up on top of that building, but you come down and that the world will see what God has done with you. Thank you, Jesus. That's, that's, that's a word. And so... Who then is Paul? 1 Corinthians 3, chapter 5, verse 5, excuse me. Who then is Paul and who is Apollos, but ministers by whom ye came to believe, even as the Lord gave to every man? I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. You see, you might have plant, planted something in your life. It might be in the will of God. It might be not in the will of God. You were walking in disobedience. You were still planting as a sower sows in the ground. The farmer, he puts the corn seed in. What's going to come up? Corn. Whether he sows discord in his life by bad seeds, seeds or he sows healthy seeds of God's prosperity. He sows prayers for others. He sows in, remember it says that we sow in tears, but joy comes in the morning. You see, we're at that time when the morning is coming. This is why the demons are so exposed now, because you see the darkness is being exposed. Once the darkness is exposed, we don't need to worry about where it is or what it's doing because we have the power in the name of Jesus to call it out, cease and desist and arrest. <clears throat> so then neither is he that planteth anything nor he that watereth, but God who giveth the increase. God is the one that gives us the increase. Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one, and every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. For we are laborers together with God, ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building. You are God's building. You see, this is why it's so important to keep your house, which is the temple of God, pure and, and, and clean as you can. You are, of course, doing everything you know to the best of your ability, but through Christ, we can do all things that he strengthens us. For no man can lay another foundation than that which is laid, 
which is Jesus Christ. You see, Jesus is the only foundation we need. Now, if any man build upon this foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall test every man's work of what sort it is. You see, whatsoever you have, if you commit everything to God, he will reward you at the end. Not that you're doing all these things in life for a reward. You're doing them because you love God. But he says, if any man's work abide, which he hath... Wait a second. If, ev if any man's work abide, which he hath built thereon, thereon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. He, sh he himself, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as fire. And we go on and it says, number 17, If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy, for the temple of God is holy, and ye are that temple. You know, it's, it's so hard to think sometimes. We get so off track. We get so busy. But we have to remember that we are the temple. We are the temple of God Almighty. Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world, let him become a fool that he may become wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, He taketh the wise in their own craftiness. And again, the Lord knoweth the thoughts of the wise, that they are vain. Therefore, let no man glory in men, for all things are yours, whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas or the world or life or death or, pre or things present or things to come. All are yours, and ye are Christ's, and Christ is God's. That is a mouthful. And that's a mindful. <laughs> that's like, did you just get that downloaded in your brain? <laughs> did that just resonate with you? And again, the Lord, Lord knoweth the thoughts of the wise that they are vain. Whether Paul or Apollos or Cepheus or the world or life or death or things present or things to come, all are yours and ye are Christ's and Christ is God's. We can't lose. We can't lose. And you see, it's the presence of the Holy Spirit in our life daily. I continue to have the Lord speak to my heart. It's like, Susan, don't care about what you wear. Don't care about what you eat. Don't care about where you go. Because when you submit your life to Christ every day, He guides your thoughts. Your footsteps are ordered. The righteous man's, the, the Lord will order the righteous, the man's footsteps. The righteous man's footsteps are ordered by God. I think that's exactly what it says. And so we just don't need to worry. We need to pray for those that are uh, not in Christ. I, I saw last night uh, some videos. You know, it's amazing how God leads you to these crazy things you never thought you'd look at in your life. And I'm, and I'm reading, reading and watching. And I saw these videos on, on YouTube about turbulence, air turbulence in these airplanes, the recent ones. These are just like 2015, 2016, 
It's unbelievable. Just go Google it on YouTube. Air turbulence inside the cabin. It's like all hell is cutting loose now. You know, they're messing with the, the air currents, you know, up in the atmosphere and the, and the air. Man is messing with this entire planet. And I continue to tell people, well, you know, I want to just say to you, remember, as it was in the days of Noah, as it was in the days of Lot, as it was in the beginning, so shall it be at the end. Men will be doing all these things, but only the righteous will be saved, only those that are in Christ. And we want to keep our oil in our lamp. And so this is most important that we remember all these things will come and go and and we may see demons we may all of these things but you just rebuke them you do what the lord did when he was up in the up in the uh, cave you know when god jesus went up in the mountain you know the devil said go ahead throw yourself down the angels will catch you and what did the lord say thou shalt not tempt the lord thy god he always used scripture the scripture, the word of God. Thank you, Jesus. And this is all I have to say to you. We are going to see mighty, mighty miracles of people being healed. You see, God doesn't care whether you're on satellite television, whether you're on YouTube, whether you're standing in Walmart and someone's going to come right up to you and they're going to pour out the word of God and his presence and his anointing and God is going to heal you. God doesn't care how he gets it to you. And God doesn't need all of these things and ways. Because you see, we are in the day when you are going to see God put you on a motorcycle. And you're going to go straight up that building. Impossible in the natural, but possible in the supernatural. And not only possible in the supernatural, but you see, there's one thing we're forgetting. God owns all the odds. So there are no odds with God. You are in 100%. Every time I think of, you know, the Lord tells me he's going to do this or he's going to do that. And I look in the natural. I think in the natural, I say, oh, come on. You know, you're going to do this? I said, what are the odds? It always comes out of my brain. What are the odds? And the Lord just stops me. And he says, you know, it's like I could just see him chuckling. And he's like, are you serious? You're asking me what are the odds? 100% <laughs> do I need to remind you again and again and again? It's 100%. I just was out this morning. I had an errand. I had to run before I could come home back and do these little videos. And um, I had to stop at a, a store that was a, a huge store. And a lot of people were there. Guess what? Front parking spot. There it was again this morning. There it was again. And I just sit there and I go, only God can do these kind of things. Because it continues to show up again and again and again every single time. I continue to get green lights. We need to just be at peace. And know that God is moving in our lives in everything we do. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we lift up our bodies. We present them to you, a living sacrifice, Father, holy and acceptable unto you, because we are the temple of God. We thank you, Father God, that your light shines upon us. We thank you, Father God, that your healing virtue goes out of us to whosoever, wheresoever they be, through the airwaves. You don't have, we don't have to physically be there because it's by your spirit, not by might, not by power, but by thy spirit, the Lord says. And that is the impossibility becoming reality you see that is you going up the side of a building that would be impossible in the natural but god says i sh not only can i shall do this with you 
Think it not strange that the enemies would come up against you, for surely you are a target, because you stand for me. You are part of the remnant. You are the one believing in the midst of all hell. You're still believing. Continue to still believe on me, the Lord would say to you. Thank you, Jesus. We love you so much, Father God. We give you all the glory. As you touch us this day, as you heal our eyes, you heal our ears, you speak your words out of our mouth, Father God. You anoint us, you send us, you appoint us this day. We praise you. We give you all the glory in Jesus' wonderful name, in Jesus' wonderful, matchless name. God bless you for watching. The Holy Spirit is just moving so strongly right now. I just want to say to you, continue to thank him. Thank him, thank him, thank him for whatsoever you are believing him for, for he is doing it. He not only can, he is. You see, the Lord used to tell me years ago, only believe all things are possible. All things are possible to them that believe. This is the key. This is the key. And this is what makes you a ministry of a most unusual kind. Wheresoever you go, for we are all called. We are all called. In Jesus' name. Now bless us, Father, as we go about our day. Anoint us, appoint us, send us, protect us. Thank you for your blessed presence, your aroma over our lives. Let others smell your aroma on us, Jesus. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. It's still pulsating out of my hand the whole time. God bless you for watching. Thank you for your prayer requests, your praise reports. Thank you for your faithful giving to the ministry. Have a blessed, anointed, appointed day in Him.